wet. <laughs> wet. <laughs> so I headed out at uh, 4 a.m. in the dark this morning for a little adventure. I have a conference call at 8 a.m. So right now it's 6. So I've been in the dark rain for two hours. It was fun as hell. So this was this will continue on with some sparring drills, but the way I introduced this at first is somewhat like an energy drill. So it's an actual pattern of jab, cross, jab, cross, hook, hook, uppercut, uppercut, overhand, overhand. And I actually start with it almost like keys out. So where the guy's hands are inside of the guy that's punching, his hands are on the inside and my hands are on the outside hooking over his hands. And he does the jab and I work my parry. And he does the cross and I work my parry. Now he disengages to throw the hook and I cover. And he disengages from this hand to throw the hook and I cover, okay? And then he does the uppercut and I use an inside deflection with my elbow to deflect it. Same thing here. Overhand comes in, overhand comes in. All right? And so that's how I introduce the sequence. But then what I do is I break it down. I still call this a sparring, not quite a sparring drill, but somewhat. So let's just go to the jab cross attachment, right? So this is, if you use Wing Chun terms, it's fuks out. <laughs> Why pock when you can fuck, right? So the idea is that he throws the jab and the cross, but we, we stay attached, right? And, and I parry this way and I parry this way. Now, when he feeds it again, I can continue to do that passive mode for a while. But then I, what I want to begin to do is to uh, insert sliding leverage punches. So that when he punches at me with the jab, basically I turn, keep my elbow down, cut into his tool to deflect it off the line, and punch him. Okay, now again, we've discussed this. These sliding leverage strikes don't have a lot of power, okay? But they accomplish two things at the same time, a block and an offensive movement um, together. So it's an interception, okay? It's cutting. And that's one of the, um, um, the, the term jeet, right? One of the meanings of it, besides interception, is to cut, okay? So, and so the same thing on the cross. Sometimes I'll just guide it past, and then when it comes in, one of the times when I choose to, I keep the elbow down, and I cut in and I do a sliding leverage punch. So if he really, really extends it, okay, and gets good rotation and lean into his hits, I can just go ahead and pretty much keep my back straight to cut in like this, okay? But if not, I really have to take a partial step and crash towards that line, or, or even a small push or step and slide to crash towards the line. And it would have been the same thing on this side as well, okay? So if he really penetrates, then all I have to do is turn and hit. But he, if he doesn't penetrate so much, then I'm the one who has to go ahead and use uh, a pivot step, right? And we can discuss a pivot as well, right? A partial pivot, right, would be like any step. A partial pivot would just be my angle in with this foot, and that's it, okay? The full pivot, of course, is the readjustment by the rear, okay? All right, so that's the idea um, on, the, on the jab and the cross, is to cut from the outside, all right? Okay, so, this is kind of again like you're talking about the use of straight punching within within punching range and that you're beginning to clinch see what i mean hands are over 
One can be under, one can be over on both sides. All right. And again, you're talking about use of isolating wrist area, wrist and forearm as the uh, where, where you're grabbing it, right? And then the next step again goes, we're talking about segmenting the limbs. I encompass it with my elbows this way. I encompass it with my elbows this way. Okay, all right. So it's, it's all of it is just basic anatomy and segmentation concept, principle, okay? So what we do on the hook punches, okay, is a little bit different. So if I go from the jab back to the attachment again, and he goes jab and he goes cross and I stick to it, okay? When he disengages to throw the hook punch now, okay, basically I do an overhand, but on the inside of his hook punch. And what I do prior to that is I already begin to raise my structure in the defensive shield so that when it just begins to make contact with it, okay, that I turned it into an overhand on the inside of his hook punch arm. So it's an inside sliding lever, okay, slash deflection, all right? But it's not pinning because it's inside. The outside cuts, cut and pin. The inside cuts, cuts, <laughs> cut this way, okay, and thrust but there's no pinning action, all right? And then on the hook on this side, it's the same thing. I begin to form my cover, but as soon as it makes contact, I raise the elbow up and shoot in like that. But it's really not a separate movement. It's all together, okay? I go boom, boom like that. And then on this side, I go boom like that. But it's not on the outside of its hook, it's on the inside. Okay, that's gonna do it for today. And, uh, so I have to get back to the house and get some breakfast and um, get ready for that conference call because we're doing part two, part two of FMA versus FAMA, Filipino American martial arts. <laughs> so we're going to get into some of the uh, likenesses and differences of the two and um, what makes them unique and or not. Cheerio.